Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This Sunday, as I'm sure we're aware by the reading that we've just had, is the Sunday of the paralytic, the Sunday of the man who was, who was beside a pool for 30 and 8 years, we heard. Almost 40 years. It's longer than many of us here have been alive. He'd been there beside a pool, waiting for a miracle. A miracle that by its very nature was very difficult for him to take advantage of. Because if you were first in the pool, then you got the miracle. And if you're paralyzed, you're not first doing a whole lot of things by nature. So it feels like a very unfair miracle to us when talking about this particular man. And he has this experience with Jesus, where Jesus says, you want to be made well, and then heals him. Then, then he's carrying his bed. He's doing what the miracle worker told him to do. It was against Mosaic law, but I'd probably do the same thing. If this, if this is a man who is able to work miracles, then this is a man who has God's favor. We'll do what he says. And he's, he's pulled up for this. Why, why do this? And, well, the guy who worked this miracle did it. Who's that? Not sure. He finds out. The next couple of sentences is that, uh, after the gospel reading today, is that he then uh, went away and he said it was Jesus. He didn't know it first. He didn't know it first, which is, well, uh, you probably don't take terribly much notice of people when, they're, when you're doing a strange thing. You know that you're doing a strange thing. Do you want to be made well? Yeah. And so, and he, he doesn't take much notice until he does. When he comes up, when he, he says, don't sin further. There's this connection that we see in Scripture. It's not a one-to-one -one connection, but there is this connection where there is sin and there is problems, physical and otherwise. There is sin, and then and there, this has a connection to his paralysis. At another time, and we'll hear all about this in a couple of weeks' time, there's a man who was blind from birth, and this was unconnected to sin, and Jesus says this very specifically. But in this case, it is. In this case, there is a connection. We don't know what that is. It's not part of the story, but there is that connection. Sin has a way. In, in fact, it's by its very nature Sin is not what the world was designed for. It is its own deformity. A deformity in the cosmos that we brought in. We, humanity. And we suffer the impacts of that. Sometimes it's we suffer the impacts of someone else's. Sometimes uh, ancestors. Sometimes the first of ancestors. But we do suffer the impacts of the fall. It's unfair, but there it is. These, how it, is it that we turn ourselves around? We turn ourselves around because we turn ourselves from sin. We turn ourselves from this deformity to the only one who has brought healing. It's true that uh, that there are that there is temporal healing, there is physical healing that can be had from um, whether exercises or um, or from a pharmacy. These are good. You want to fix the problem at its core. It's healing sin itself, and this is the one who was able to do that. This is the one who, after he died, rose, and ascended, was still able to make that happen not just because of himself, but because 
he was working through others. We heard that in today's epistle reading. The people were waiting for Peter to pass by, waiting for Peter to come to, come to them so that this one could be healed, so that this one could be raised from the dead. This has continued through. As Jesus said, he did not leave us orphaned when he left. He did not leave us to go to our own devices and good luck to you. He loved us enough to go to hell and back for us. And so he loved us to have this continuity with us. We can read about this in the lives of the saints. We can read about this uh, throughout church history. There have been extraordinary things. And we ourselves in this city have had that experience of having something wonder working with us. Not because of our worth or because of any worth at all. But because our God loves us and wants us to return to him. This paralysis is... This deformity that sin is, is something that has always affected society and societies, cultures, ethnicities. It's affected all the world for since world, the world began. There is a way to turn from that. The way to turn from that is actually very straightforward and we know it very well. It's repentance. It's confession in giving our lives to him. We may wish that this was a one-off. In some sense, it is. There's, for many people, a turning point. And if we're really honest, then after that turn, we get out of whack. And we have to realign ourselves. To reorient ourselves is quite literally, to, to again go eastward. That's what Orient means. To again go eastward towards the one who is coming from there, who will return from there. To reorient ourselves, to bring ourselves back to him, to the one who, who went to hell and back for us. And this is how we extinguish the worst of it from us. It feels like the worst of it is physical, physiological, psychological, how it is right now. The worst of it is on an eternal plane. And so our response needs to be likewise. When we go to the one who can heal us, who can make us whole, make us truly human. It is true that he is able to work wonders here on earth. But as, as another miracle that our Lord worked stated, he first said, your sins are forgiven you. And then, as if to prove that he could forgive sins, he said, arise and walk. Be healed of this infirmity. But the greater thing is the healing of sins. He makes that very clear. And so for us too. The greater thing is the healing of sins. The greater thing is that we approach him in repentance. We approach him to turn our lives back to him. Which, once again, is what repentance is. To re-stake out our journey as one that goes towards him. Thankfully, this is an opportunity that we have with frequency. And we value it. We ought value it for its own reason. Another reason that it's part of our preparation to receive him into us. Where we receive perhaps only a crumb of his body. But we are what we eat. With him, 
With him, he offers nothing less than his entire self. That we might receive him in, in his entirety. That we might receive him and grow to be like him. That's the path towards Christ-likeness, towards theosis, towards sanctification. These are many things that are virtually synonymous. The path goes that we turn from how we are lacking. We do indeed will to be healed. We receive this healing. And then we go and sin no more. Lest the worst thing happen. And what happens if we do? If we do fall short, and if we're being honest, when we fall short, we follow the same. We come to him again. We come in sorrow, in repentance, give our confession. <coughs> our confession that this is where I was, it was wrong, to turn our lives once again to him. It's only with his help, I think, that we can do that. <coughs> it's nice to think, I can do this. I can do this on my own. But as anyone who has tried to conquer a bad habit, a sinful habit, on their own, knows, we can't do it ourselves. That's okay. Ask for help. Ask for his help. And when we forget, ask for it again. And from there, from there, we have that Christ-like life of continually aligning, aligning ourselves to what is godly, following this and pursuing it all the days of our life. Amen.